It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. This has got to be some of the hardest shit that I've never wrote, see. I remember summers on the nine. The call of fellas coming from the kitchen, man, out of bed by nine and breakfast by ten. We built pillow forts. Those pillow forts meant platters of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with Coke cups filled to the rim with milk and ice cubes. I'd kill to have my granny back. I miss those fun days where we would mess with you until you got fed up and chased us around the house with your yellow little tights beat a nigga bat. Or the time you and Titi had me and the boys barricaded in the bathroom avoiding being popped by your bandanas. And there were simpler times you'd walk us to the store, watch us load up on sweets, but couldn't wait to get back home in your pack of Cheetos, pack of Cools, and a cup of tea. Holidays meant happiness. Family food and fun, we would pig out till we pass out then from there. Y'all know how it go, right? Five to a room, hopefully you get a spot on the bed. Otherwise, pick a spot on the floor, go to sleep, wake up, and prepare to make more memories. I miss those nice summer days where the hoop sessions were followed by hot dogs and hamburgers fresh off the grill. Granny, you, you were the greatest. You granted a diplomatic immunity that no parent enforced punishment could that protest could see. Moms and pops was good, but granny, you was cold when they words was silver shit. Yours was gold, but life. Life throws curveballs, not even their best batter could swing at. I seen that smile start to fade. I seen shifts in your normal ways. There were holidays with less happiness. Hoop sessions, no more hot dogs and hamburgers. Pillow force, no more peanut butter and jellies. I thought this was just a phase. The more it happened, the more I looked for answers to pops pulls me and bro to the side like, boys, your grandmother has breast cancer. Not familiar with terminal illness, I hadn't grasped how real this beast could get. It diminishes features at a rate too fast to fathom. I watch you go from Pocahontas to put on hat to warm your exposed scalp. Your brown skin turned to a blotchy surface and eventually your face was not one I had come to know. Your movements got slow and eventually your voice, it was nowhere to be found. Laughter and conversation was replaced by sounds of agony whenever you had to move. Granny, this was not you. You were a crown jewel, a queen in your own space. I prayed. Prayed that you would snap out of it, but you never did. The lady I knew was Granny could no longer hug me, hold me. I yearned to wake up to your distant shout or at least hit a catchphrase and you get fed up and tell everyone else to get the fuck out. But to be honest, I can't even remember the last words you spoke to me. Every time I speak on you, I choke on the thought of what could be if you were still here. Every moment you laid in the hospital bed, I wondered if I'd face my biggest fear. July 10, 2007, 4.06 a.m., my biggest fear came true. The angel of death came to you and all I could do was stare at your lifeless body, remembering the smile as you looked up at the get well balloon that I bought you out of wishful thinking, thinking that maybe you would never leave. Maybe you had one more trick up your sleeve. They're telling me that you're not suffering no more, so maybe I'm supposed to be relieved. But I felt your presence as you've been gone. So I'll take pride in that. No order won't be long. But till then, I'm kicked back, reminiscing with Wiz like, It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. That's that piece. <laughs>